to everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Glovac de Chevilly. I'm very pleased to welcome you today and our afternoon session with uh, Uren Nolt, who is Holistic Life Coach. Today, um, we are answered to your request to organize another session on how to improve your sleep. And Hiran will give um, today this, uh, this session with a special presentation that she prepared, which uh, she prepared to help you with the sleeping problems. So she will give you health uh, and lifestyle recommendation based on Western and traditional Chinese medicine, as well as offer different EFT taping sequences to help you sleep. Uh, some of you, have, you know already how the EFT uh, works, but maybe the, the new ones that they never, never, never um, heard about it. So Irene is going to start with the explanation and the presentation after we will have the session, um, um, EFT sessions. Uh, I would like just to wish you a very nice and uh, pleasant uh, and also uh, efficient session. Uh, this is a Friday afternoon, so I hope that you are, you will enjoy it together with us. And I will give the floor to Irene. Thank you, Maria. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for being here. So um, yeah, my name is Irene Nolte. I'm half German, half Romanian, but born and bred in Brussels in the context of the European institutions. I went to the European school um, and I began my career uh, by studying international human rights law and worked in that sector, in the international political sector, and quite early on had some kind of burnouty crisis, um, which was really an invitation for me to reconsider questions of emotional and physical health. And at first I studied shiatsu, the Japanese art of acupressure, um, just as a hobby actually on the side. And then it really, really drew me into um, the healing art practices. And then came EFT, the emotional freedom technique that I will demonstrate today and we will be tapping today. I'm hearing some background noise, sorry. If someone, if, can we really switch off? Can we mute everyone please? So yeah, and so I studied EFT, um, the emotional freedom technique. And then with time, I just understood that I, that I really, that I wanted to dedicate my, my life to the healing arts and EFT, the emotional healing, uh, the emotional freedom technique really helped me in that because as you will see EFT is super super simple um, I will give a brief theoretical uh, outline later on and you can work you can use it on absolutely everything so you can tap on anxiety you can tap on 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 fear on anger on sadness on things that will happen in the future things that are going on in the present and things of course of the past today we will use it specifically on sleeping problems and um, yeah, I think this conference is timely because according to the World Health Organization, at, the, at this time speaking about one in three adults have sleeping problems, um, either sporadic or chronic. Um, you have 35% of elementary school children have problems to fall asleep and out of which, out of this group, 21% have problems to sleep through the night, right? Now, I think insomnia and sleeping problems and anxiety levels have increased also through the latest things that have been going on with the lockdown and social distancing and, and so much fear, like we, we were under so much fear in the last year. So, um, so yeah, and of course, this then had an impact on, on our sleeping patterns. So this talk today um, <clears throat> has two parts and I'm just going to share my screen for you one second. And then you can also uh, share. Okay, so the structure um, of today's uh, presentation is as follows. So in the first part, I will talk about sleep and insomnia. Why do we actually sleep? Why do we actually need to sleep? And believe it or not, it is still more or less a mystery to science, right? It is still a rather mysterious phenomenon, and yet it is so fundamental to our health. I will briefly go through the consequences of not sleeping, both physically, physical and emotional and psychological. Then I will lay out the causes of insomnia 
at first from a Western medical perspective, and then I will give you the perspective from traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and then, of course, I will give you a series of life, health and lifestyle recommendations, both from the Western scientific point of view and from traditional Chinese medicine. And in the second part, um, we will be doing some tapping. So I'll show you how EFT works. And I have prepared three tapping rounds. In the first tapping round, so we'll be tapping these acupuncture points while focusing on the problem. The thing with sleep sleeping problems is this, the longer they last, right? The longer you struggle with sleeping problems, whether it is the problem to fall asleep or whether you wake between three and five in the morning and you just lie there and worry. Um, the longer that this goes on, of course, you start to condition yourself. You start to connect sleep with struggle, right? So then the mere idea of having to go to sleep or of having to go to bed can be really can be really daunting. And so the first round then is to kind of take away that edge, take away this association that you might have made between sleeping um, and struggling. The second round will be for those who struggle to fall asleep. Um, so generally, the people who fall asleep lie awake till about one or three. All of this can be explained um, in traditional Chinese medicine, I'll get to that. And then the third round is for the third group who can easily fall asleep, easily fall asleep, but then they wake between three and five in the morning and just lie there and sometimes don't even go back to sleep. And that, of course, is also uh, super exhausting. So let me start at the beginning. <clears throat> it's going to be a minute. So why do we sleep? Um, so this information comes from um, Harvard University, Harvard's Division of Sleep Medicine. Uh, believe it or not, as I said, uh, it is rather mysterious still why we sleep. And there are four main theories. The first one is, you can call it the safety theory. It's also called the inactivity theory. And <clears throat> here sleep is seen as an adaptation um, that served as a survival function by keeping the organisms out of harm's way at times when they would be particularly vulnerable, right? So there's the link between safety and darkness in the process of evolution. Then there's the second theory, uh, which I like to call the efficiency theory, but it's actually called the energy conservation theory. So sleep is seen as a way to reduce the individual's energy demand and expenditure during that part of the day or night especially at times when it's least efficient to search for food, right? So here we're also like in this evolutionary um, approach. <clears throat> then comes thirdly, the restorative theory or theories. Um, so here the idea is that we sleep um, to restore what was lost while we were awake. So sleep is an opportunity to, for the body to repair and rejuvenate itself. Um, animals and obviously humans and are deprived of sleep lose all immune function um, and die within just a matter of weeks. And then <clears throat> comes the last theory or the fourth theory, <clears throat> which I think is the is the is actually the most pertinent and 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 the the, the newest or the youngest, if you like. Um, so this theory correlates sleep to changes in the structure and organization of the brain. So sleep is really seen, and I think science is really demonstrating that more and more sleep is playing a key role in brain development in infants and young children, also in adults. Um, and it has an, a profound impact on learning and memory. So I'm sure that if you've had a bad night's sleep, you resonate with that, that the next day is just more difficult to focus and it's, it's, it's just more difficult to, to remember things. I think there are further reasons why we sleep. So um, that's maybe just more of my, my, my holistic perspective. I think sleep also has to do with reconciliation. So in my experience and what I also see in my clients is that when we have problems to sleep, no matter whether it is the problem to fall asleep or waking in the middle of the night, something's going on in their lives, right? Something's going on in your life. So, and, and that something needs to be processed and looked at. So insomnia shouldn't be seen in isolation. Insomnia shouldn't just be seen as the problem. I would say insomnia is your friend because it's showing you that something deeper needs to be processed and something else is going on, right? So it's really about reconciling yourself with yourself and with your present life circumstances. 
And then, of course, I thought it was um, important to mention Carl Gustav Jung, uh, the well-known psychologist, and he saw sleep and dreaming as the psyche's attempt to communicate important things to us. Um, and he, he valued dreams and sleeping so highly because um, for him, it was really a way for, I mean, that's more spiritual perspective, right? But like a spirit or a soul informing us of what's really going on. So I just thought it was nice to add this. Okay, so what are the consequences uh, of not sleeping? They are absolutely far reaching. Um, so first of all, uh, with regard to mental health, not sleeping, um, leads to a loss of optimal concentration and focus, right? We get, we get, our mind gets blurred, our thinking gets blurred. Um, memory consolidation takes place during sleep. Um, <clears throat> and so of course, then, then when we don't sleep, we might have memory loss, we forget things. We can be on, in a negative mood. So maybe some of you are like that, you know, just, just get in a bad mood, being on edge. Not sleeping definitely increases anxiety and stress, also frustration and tension. And in my experience, it's also helplessness, right? If you haven't slept several nights in a row and this has been ongoing, it can really, um, it can really make you feel helpless, right? Because you just don't know how to solve it anymore. Uh, it increases a negative outlook on life. So the more tired you get and the more this whole sleeping thing becomes a struggle, um, the more life can appear like a struggle. It can even contribute to or be caused by uh, psychiatric problems. So about 70% of people with depression have insomnia and equally insomnia can be a signal that there might be a depressed mood um, arising within you. So this can be an alarm signal to, to be aware of. Not sleeping of course can lead to poor performance at work, you know, in, in all areas of your life. <clears throat> and of course then, as I said before, it can lead to this conditioning that sleep is difficult, right? Sleep can sometimes really feel like hard work in this context. Physical consequences of not sleeping. <clears throat> Decreased immune function. So that's a very real thing. If we're exhausted, then our immune system works less well. Critical, chronic medical conditions such as diabetes are contributed to high blood pressure, heart disease in general, um, increased blood pressure. Uh, there can be blood sugar problems. So you might have, I don't know if that, um, if that applies to you, but for some people when they don't sleep so well, they start to nibble more, right? Especially in the afternoon around three, four, when it's more drawn to eating something sweet, something sugary, just to kind of like keep going and keep the energy going. Um, so that in itself can, of course, increase inflammation because the blood becomes more acidic. Um, there can be more appetite, weight gain. Um, it can even lead to addictions and substance, substance abuse. So for instance, in the evening, you're exhausted, you had a long day at work, um, and that then one might be more easily drawn to alcohol, to drinking, which of course is also sugar, um, just as a way of, of relaxing the body, you know, because alcohol and tension go well together right the more tense we are during the day the more easy it is for us to 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 grab a glass of something beer wine or so on to let go of that tension but um you need to watch that of course and and it's it's definitely not uh, a sustainable long-term solution i also wrote um, avoidance strategies such as facebook right so which can also be an addiction so sometimes when just everything gets too much we try to soothe ourselves and we try to zone out and, and, and social media can be one of them. Um, of course, needless to say, it's also not a sustainable long-term solution, but I'm just mentioning it so to draw your awareness to it in case, um, in case that is happening to you, right? These can be alarm signals that, that something needs to change and something needs to be looked at. It can, <clears throat> sleeplessness and tiredness can of course lead to traffic accidents, medical errors, um, and I read, I thought this was really, I didn't even know this, you know, in this, uh, in this Harvard um, sleep division document, it even said that these nuclear accidents, uh, three mile islands, so I think that was in Pennsylvania and the 86 meltdown in Chernobyl um, were apparently also caused by someone just nodding off and falling asleep. So just to say what, what huge public health consequences this can have on, on, in, in, on every level. Okay. <clears throat> So what are the causes of insomnia? 
Um, so I'm first going to give you the, give you the Western medical perspective. Um, so for the Western medicine, uh, for, for, for how to say that, for, for Western medicine, yeah, one, the, the main causes of insomnia are worry, sleep apnea, so there might be a congestion um, uh, in your larynx or pharynx, right, um, and, and yeah, in the throat and so on, or in the sinuses, and, and that then, of course, um, um, leads to, to waking up and just not sleeping deeply, restless legs, uh, so these like your legs jumping all over at night time, Tree, uh, teeth grinding, noise or light, excess caffeine during the day or too late in the day, <clears throat> lack of exercise. Um, so it can also be drug use and by that I mean synthetic drugs, but also other things, you know, just like medication and just so on. Um, and of course, things like chronic anxiety uh, or depression uh, and of course other conditions. Now, <clears throat> from the perspective of traditional Chinese medicine, it's really important to um, highlight the fact that we, um, we distinguish between two types of insomnia. So first of all, there's the first one uh, where you can't fall asleep. And then if you're lucky, you fall asleep between one and three. <clears throat> or there's the other type of insomnia where you easily fall asleep, but you wake between three and five. And in TCM, um, the, the, the reasons for that are very different. The first one where you can't fall asleep um, is more has to do with the health of your liver and gallbladder, and I will get to that in a minute. And the second one, so three to five, is more a lung, large intestine issue. And what that means, I will explain um, in a second. So just for you to know, in traditional Chinese medicine, the key focus is always on the organs, right? So we, in, it's, we, we constantly talk about, I don't know what, the health of the lungs, the lung health of the liver, the health of the stomach, the spleen, the large intestine, the small intestine, and so on. And by that, obviously, these organs, we mean these organs, but every organ also has an emotional and metaphorical function. To give you just one example that will uh, explain this, if we talk about the stomach, Obviously, the stomach has to do with, with food and digestion, but in TCM, we also see it as a metaphor for how nourished do you feel in life, right? How nourished do you feel in your relationships? How nourished do you feel by your work, not just financially, but also uh, in general? And so when we look at, this, at the strength and health of this organ, the stomach, all of these aspects are taken into account, right? So um, voila. I thought that was important to mention. So <clears throat> um, just as in Western medicine, there's the circadian clock. So you have basically the, the, um, your, your biorhythm. And in TCM, each organ was given a certain time because it was believed that at that time, the organ gets the most energy. So if that organ is stuck or congested or full of toxins, then we feel um, something going on in our body at that time of the night. So between 11 and 1 is the gallbladder, and then 1 to 3 is the liver. Um, so, so we consider that if there are problems of falling asleep, they fall into this category. And if the person then wakes between 3 and 5 or lies awake um, the whole morning, then we look more in the direction of the lungs and large intestine. And so what does that actually mean? And why, why, why would that be important for you to know? Um, for some reason, some slides. What's going on here? Okay, so I will go into greater detail. Sorry, I just don't know what happened to my slides. They seem to be mixed up, but I'm just going to go in here. Okay, so what can you do to fall asleep? What can what can really help you? And I will go more into the into the other slides in a minute. What can you do to fall asleep? First of all, you need to um, you need to really stick to the, to a very strict schedule, right? So what works for me is going to bed really early. If I know that if I'm not super super strict with my sleeping struggle uh, cycle, then 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 that can become problematic, right? So um, if you are an early bird, so really get up early at six or seven uh, and stick to that. You know, just really, yeah, just be very very strict with yourself. Follow your own biorhythm. Um, avoid screen time after 9.30. 
that's really important because all this all this light really is very stimulating so it's really a time to just like calm down calm down and return back to yourself reduce stimulants and sugar and spices um, in particular in the evening don't have coffee or black tea uh, after two o'clock in the afternoon also no chocolate chocolate uh, it really wakes you up and it's it really has an effect on the liver as well it really wakes up the liver and then you might have difficulties falling asleep you can ask yourself whether gluten is an issue. So how are your blood sugar levels? Might be worth checking if you have, um, if you have sleeping problems. So maybe, maybe something's up with your, yeah, with your blood sugar levels uh, before you fall asleep. Okay, you might want to engage with a night ritual that you repeat every single evening. So for example, have a foot bath. That's a really nice thing to do. So you just take a basin or a bucket or whatever it is um, and add essential oils, something calming, and place beautiful music, and really set it as a clear signal to your system that now is time to sleep. So you stop, you stop the screen, you don't watch anything, you, you, you don't surf the internet and so on, you really, you stop and you come back to yourself. That can be really, can be really struggling, uh, can be really difficult at times. Okay, make sure that you ex exercise enough uh, to reduce cortisol levels. So with stress and anxiety, obviously our cortisol levels rise and by exercising, you can get all the stress out of your body. Stretching and yoga is great for that as well. Keeping a journal, keeping a gratitude journal can be a thing you can do in the uh, evenings. <clears throat> uh, it's all about helping you to, to calm down and, and help your system um, go into a slower, into a slower, um, into a slower operating system if you want uh, at night time. Reduce light, reduce the noise, and make sure that the temperature is fine. Maybe your room is too warm at night, you know, so you might want to check that as well. Okay, check if your, if your, if your diet is balanced, you know, enough vegetables, enough protein, um, Return to alpha, by that I mean uh, this has to do with brain frequency. So, so alpha, you, you experience alpha, for instance, you sit in an empty church or by a lake or by the ocean or on the mountaintop, you know, so of course we can't do that in everyday life, but you can try to generate that within your, um, your living room and just, you know, bring the music down, bring the lights down and just, just change the whole atmosphere to help you calm down. Uh, of course, hormones in particular for women. So once you're above 38, there can be questions of perimenopause or uh, yeah, menopause. So hormonal reasons can have an impact on your sleep. And of course, uh, there's the question of a slight onset of depression, which might also, um, might also need to be checked. All right, so here we go. That's the liver. Um, so how to heal the liver. So this, this, these recommendations are for people, I mean, they're for all people because we all need to heal our liver, but in particular for those who struggle to fall asleep at nighttime, right? Okay, so the liver in traditional Chinese medicine has to do with our life path. So when our liver is relaxed and healthy and we eat lots of leafy green vegetables and we exercise and then it's easier for us to see our life path. It's easier for us where we want to go in life. So the liver in Chinese medicine has to do with long-term planning, clarity and alignment with your purpose. Conversely, let's imagine you're in a super stressed environment. You're, you're just exhausted. You're eating junk food and let's not blame anyone here. It's not to criticize. It's, it's just that you just don't actually even have the time anymore to cook and, and get beautiful organic vegetables and so on, right? It's just not realistic. Well, chances are that your liver is getting a little bit congested, a little bit stuck. And then it's this catch-22 situation, right? Like you're exhausted, you're overworked, you don't have the time or energy to take care of yourself and that leads to further congestion. That just makes you feel, that just makes you feel worse, right? So it's about integrating small and achievable steps that help you. For instance, you could just buy lots of leafy green vegetables and try and eat them a little bit during the, during the week or during the day. That will already have an effect. So we'll just run through the list of recommendations um, to healing your liver. So <clears throat> we recognize a healthy liver, as I said, if we see our life path, if we're, if we're clear about where we want to go in life, but also if we have balanced emotions. So just even emotions. 
typically people with with where who have liver issues and again we're in the metaphor right no one has actual i don't mean that people have like a liver illness it is about congestion in the organ people where the liver might not be in, in an optimal state you know they might have lots of energy at one moment or be very enthusiastic in one moment and then just you know have very little energy in the afternoon or so so neither the energy levels nor the emotions are stable if that's the case for you then you, you know it might be nice to support your liver and by the way i think every adult needs to support their liver right so there can be things like um, anger outbursts frustration um, livery people, in, from, from my TCM perspective, they have a tendency to become very dominant, you know, they, they, can, they can become very controlling, like you don't really have, um, if, you're, if you're talking to them, you feel like you don't really, you have no right to your own truth. So, <clears throat> of course, if, that's, if you recognize yourself in that, so you need to find a way of dealing with your anger. So where is this anger coming from? Anger is a reaction to a sense of injustice, right? So what's this injustice about? Maybe there's a deep disappointment that wants to be looked at. So find someone to work this through. You can write in your journal, you can talk to friends, you can find a professional person to work with. Um, but that needs to be dealt with, right? Anger, anger alarms you to the fact that something wants to be addressed, that something's not right, that there's something you, you feel um, yeah, needs to be put back into balance. Eat leafy green vegetables. That is so important. So anything from broccoli to parsley, uh, bok choy. Um, really, you, you go you go into the shop and you go into the vegetable section and everything that has a green leaf. So green beans don't count. A green leaf is good for you because the chlorophyll of the leaves really help to decongest your liver. Make sure to exercise. Um, so you can get all this tension and accumulated stress out of your body. Yoga is fantastic for that. Find a way of speaking your truth. So in your journal, with a friend, with a therapist, with a tree, whoever you want to talk to, but find a way of connecting and speaking to your truth. And of course, eating whole grains, things like whole grain rice, quinoa, millet, um, help to promote uh, help, the, help the production of serotonin, um, which help you generally in your organism. Okay, <clears throat> now this, these recommendations here are for the people who wake between three and five, which in TCM uh, is seen more as a lung issue. And the lungs are seen as our seat of sadness. So whereas the liver is more linked to anger and frustration, the lungs are linked to sadness. So if you do wake between three and five, and, and, and by all means, none of these are absolutes, right? I'm just suggesting them as possibilities for you. Take, take from it what you like. I'm not saying that this is an absolute truth, right? This is just what traditional Chinese medicine suggests, and it might inform you. And if not, that's totally fine. There's so many other healing systems, such as Ayurveda or, or, or herbalists and so on, right? So I'm, I, I do not present this as an absolute truth. I just, I, I just find it interesting, I find it indicative, and for me it has worked. So waking between three and five, as said, is regarded as an issue of the lung. Um, and so there might be an indication that there's some sadness. So how do we, we deal with sadness? Um, well, you need to mourn, you need to give it some space. I think you need a little bit of time out. Um, maybe you can journal about it, write about it. The lungs. Um, also have very much to do with the, um, with the limits we put to our surroundings, right? So how much do we let people in? How much do we leave them out? Um, yeah, just healthy boundary setting. Um, I would strongly recommend avoiding milk products. And I also say that in a general way, we're now in autumn, where obviously more and more people will have colds uh, and so on. So if you can abstain from milk products in this season, it is really, it's a really good idea because <clears throat> milk products really produce this congestion both in your lungs and in your sinus. And for reasons I don't need to talk about, none of us need that right now, right? Keep your lungs and your, and your whole um, breathing system clear and clean. And ginger, by the way, really helps. So have lots of grated ginger with hot water it really helps to, to evacuate at whatever's going on in your lungs. Eating white vegetables also helps the lungs um, from a TCM perspective. 
and receiving mothering. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't have to be your mother, right? Uh, it can be your mother if you have a good relationship with her, but, but mothering is more in the sense of like receiving mothering care. Everyone I know, and, and I'm sure everyone who's here in this talk is hardworking and giving a lot, giving a lot at home, in private, in their private lives, at work. Um, and we, we live in, in, in very turbulent and, 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 and extremely challenging times. So we all should integrate a practice into our lives where we receive, you know, whether it's a massage or um, or, or, or any kind of practice that nourishes you and where it's all about you, right? Where you don't have to give, even if it's just one hour a month. So being listened to um, and having warm, regular meals and investing in a loving home. So by that, I mean, in your home, buy some fly flowers, buy a nice painting, buy, I don't know what, a new rug, you know, that makes you happy. Really invest so that your home becomes a really, really cozy place that can also support you um, with regard to these kind of symptoms. Then there's just a row of holistic questions that I think are really important to ask. Um, and the question is this, how are you actually? Like, how are you really? I think we're all so incredibly busy at just, you know, just keeping on going, getting everything done that we need to do. And life is insanely busy for everyone. So just pause for a moment and ask yourself, how are you really? <laughs> in the in the depth of yourself you know just 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 allow yourself to to engage with that question what's going on in your life so of course this is linked to insomnia right what is going on in your life are there do you struggle in your workplace do you struggle with your boss do you struggle with uh, a colleague do you struggle in your relationship um what is going on right and just become very aware of it we're very good at pushing things aside and thinking we have to soldier on. And, and in order to heal insomnia, it's really important that you, that, you, that you allow yourself to deal with these kind of questions. Perhaps you're really tired, perhaps you're even exhausted, perhaps you're burned out, right? Perhaps it's just been too much for you. For many people, it's been too much lately, right? Everything that we've been through all together. Is there a balance in your life between work and play? Um, so this famous work-life balance, right? Are there enough, are there sufficient non-target and goal-orientated activities in your life? Or is everything that you do goal and purpose orientated? How does that make you feel? Would it not be more relaxing to just also have time out, you know, where you can just relax? Uh, was there frustration or disappointment in your job or in your private life lately? And how did you deal with that? Um, how do you deal with your anger? That's a really important question. Everyone should ask yourself, what do we do with our anger? From a holistic perspective, the more anger we feel that is not expressed and that is not used constructively, that can turn into a depression, right? The more, the more we harbor anger and a sense of injustice, um, the, the, that can really have a cumulative effect. So is there a balance between giving and receiving? Or do you feel you're giving tremendously much and you're not receiving back? All of these questions are relevant in the context of insomnia. <clears throat> okay, so that was the first part. Um, and I invite you now to the second part, which is the emotional freedom technique. And I will stop sharing my screen. One second. All right, and here we are. So, okay, so I see lots of questions, but I will not go, um, I will not go into them now just to stay on schedule so that, and I will go into them in the end, okay? All right, so we're now going to go, we're now going to do some EFT, so the emotional freedom technique. Um, and it's also called, called tapping because we literally tap on acupuncture points, right? So in traditional Chinese medicine, it was observed or it was discovered that we have energetic channels that run through the body. And on these energetic channels, we have acupuncture points. I'm sure everyone has already seen acupuncture, where we stick the needles into different points. And in EFT, we use these points, um, obviously not with needles, but with our fingertips and in a, in a specific sequence. So let me just demonstrate the points, because I'm sure there are a couple of newcomers here. 
the first thing you do is you find your little finger and it doesn't matter if it's on the left hand or the right hand. And under the little finger there's a little bone and then comes a fleshy part. And you tap in that with one finger, two fingers, three fingers, doesn't have to be strong. You can switch, it doesn't matter which hand, right? <clears throat> so that's the first point. And then we tap between the eyebrows. Then we tap next to the eyes. Under the eyes. Under the nose. Under the mouth. On the clavicle, clavicle, schlüsselbein. And on the head. So these are the points, right? Um, you can tap on everything. You can tap on anger, frustration, sadness, fatigue, exhaustion, headache, backache. You can just tap on everything um, in the past, in the present, and in the future. Um, and what it actually does while you tap is that it sends a calming signal to the amygdala which is a part of the limbic brain that is constantly scanning your reality for safety, right? And for emotional responses. So if for instance, in the past, um, it's always the example I give, let's imagine um, you went to a language class and the language teacher said, oh my God, you have a terrible accent. Then it's quite likely that when you try to speak in that second language, right? Um, that you feel a bit inhibited or that you feel a little bit shy. And so what we can do with EFT is we travel back in time to that moment and, and tap it while you focus on that moment. And that then takes away the stress um, of speaking that language, right? It gives you new options. It gives you new space. Okay, so did I say everything? Yes, okay. So I've prepared three rounds, yeah? The first round is to remove the conditioning, to remove the link between um, the, this, this idea that sleep and struggle are linked, right? So for, for so many people who have had sleeping problems, the, the mere idea of going to bed is just a nightmare, right? Because it's just like, oh my God, I will be lying there again for hours, or I'm gonna wake in the morning and lie there again, and then I'm gonna be exhausted in the next day, and I have no idea how to solve this, right? And I have no idea how to solve the next day. So the first round is um, dedicated for that, the, the, this, this conditioning that sleep and struggle go hand in hand, okay? So just a quick question, Maria, <clears throat> I just carry on, right? Or are there any, do I need to answer just to any specific questions or just go right into it? There are some questions, but it depends on you, how would you like to deal with this? Uh, I mean, uh, I've just uh, read the question related to to your um, expose, if, if I can say. Uh, this is the the question concerning what is the uh, what do you mean by do you mean by subtle sadness? Sit sadness. Okay. I, I, you know what I'm going to do? I, I'm just going to go into the into. You are going to the session, okay? The, the session gonna... and uh, the session is uh, it will be you know it yeah. will help and then we will we will discuss a bit exactly. together about techniques and everything you have ex uh, explain, explained explained before. Thank I, you. I know I know people want to go home and people want to enter their weekend, so let's just let's just uh, let's just help everyone along. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is to just lean back for a second and receive a few deep breaths, right? If you can, if you want, you can close your eyes and just receive a few deep breaths. And I just want you to focus on the sleep issue. I mean, I'm assuming you, there you have sleeping problems if you're here, either falling asleep or, or waking at night or both, I don't know. And just feel into your body what this represents, like just, just become aware of the stress levels this, this sleeping problem is uh, causing within yourself. And on a scale from zero to 10, if 10 is very strong, I would like you to give it a number. So if you're feeling super stressed and anxious around sleep, then perhaps it's a seven or an eight or a nine or a 10, I don't know. If you're just feeling a little bit stressed around it, then maybe it's a two or three, right? Just make a mental note of it. 
And also maybe notice where you're holding that stress. For some people, it's more in the stomach area. For some people, it's more in the chest. For some people, it's in the head. Just become aware of where the stress is located. If you think about sleep, if you think about not sleeping. Okay, so just make a mental note and we're going to start tapping. And so the way it works is that I say a sentence while I tap and I'm inviting you to copy um, the tapping and repeat what I'm saying. And you will just see it super easy and you just follow along, yeah? So, and I assume everyone is, yeah, everyone's muted, super. Okay, so tapping on the side of the hand and please repeat with me. Even though I feel stressed, when I think about my sleep, I choose to relax now. Even though I associate sleep with struggle, I am open to releasing this programming. Even though sleep feels like hard work, And sometimes I'm sick and tired of it. I choose to release the beliefs I have created. Between the eyebrows, all this stress and tension. next to the eyes, when I want to sleep. Under the eyes, all this struggle. Under the nose, around sleeping. Under the mouth, around not sleeping. Clavicle, I feel so frustrated. On the head and anxious. Between the eyebrows, when I'm just lying there. Next to the eyes, watching the hours go by. under the eyes and worrying about things. Under the nose, at times I wish, under the mouth, that I didn't have to sleep. Calicle, there, there's just been so much struggle. <clears throat> On the head, around sleeping. Between the eyebrows. And now I seem to expect myself next to the eyes, not to sleep. Under the eyes and to struggle at night. Under the nose, releasing all this programming. Under the mouth, I release this programming. Clavicle, I choose to release all of this programming. On the head, I release all of these thoughts. Between the eyebrows, I am open to creating a new reality. Next to the eyes, I am open to creating a new narrative. 
a new story. Under the eyes in which I can sleep. Under the nurse in which I can sleep deeply. Under the mouth, no fuss, no turning. Clavicle, no waking, no struggling. And remember to breathe, right? As we do this. On the head, releasing all this anxiety around sleep. Between the eyebrows, releasing all this anxiety around sleep. Next to the eyes, I release all this tension. Under the eyes, in my body, under the nose, I release all this tension. And the mouth from my life and from my thoughts. Clavicle. I am open to writing a new narrative. On the head, releasing the belief that sleep is struggle. Between the eyebrows, I release all this conditioning. Next to the eyes, it is safe for me to relax now. Under the eyes, it is safe for me to let go. Under the nose, releasing any remaining conditioning. And the mouth, releasing any remaining memories. I can sleep deeply. I can sleep safely. Okay, please receive a deep breath in. And breathe out. All right. So if people want to share in the chat how they're feeling, if anything has shifted, please remember, you might just remember the number you had at the beginning, at the beginning of the session of tension or negative sleep association. If you feel like sharing it, now is a good moment. Um, and then we can, uh, I can pick up on that. If anyone wants to write, you don't have to write. So Christina is writing, just realized how much tension I have accumulated. Yes, Christina, I'm with you. It's amazing how tense we are, you know, and, um, and, uh, and, and yeah, we all carry a lot. So someone feels calmer. It was a great session. Could you please send us a very interesting message? Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There will be a summary of the presentation, um, but we're still going on, right? So this was just this was just the general round, and now we will enter. Now I'll do the tour for the ones who can't fall asleep. Okay, more energy. Will you offer more sessions? Um, yeah. So the, if you well, I don't know if at this stage I'm allowed to say that you can also can't. I have a personal sleep mentorship program, right? If you want to work on a personal level, you can contact me. Positive shift feeling better, relaxation, it is working. I'm so happy for you. Okay, everyone, second round of tapping. This is for the ones who struggle to fall asleep, right? Who lie there and, and just, you know, toss and turn. So let's go into that, okay? So again, those who struggle to fall asleep, please tune into yourself and to see what it feels like, what stress. Imagine yourself going to sleep tonight or worse, imagine you have to give a big presentation tomorrow, 
and you have to go to sleep tonight, how does it feel? How does it, how do your stress levels feel? How does your trust feel that you will get to sleep in time so that tomorrow you're, 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 you're there, you're aware, um, you're, you're awake and so on. I, I, in my experience, the, the problem of not sleeping is this fear that comes up, right? Like, how am I going to cope with the next day? You know, I have all these important things to do. Will I be up to the task? Am I, will I be able to do it, right? So it's quite, it's quite uh, torturous, actually. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is for the problem of falling asleep, okay? So same thing. Tapping on the side of the hand. And please repeat with me. I can hear someone, I just wait. Uh, Maria, could you please mute everyone? I hear someone, it's really uh, distracting me. Uh, everyone is muted. Yeah, okay. I just, okay, never mind. Okay, so let's just, let's just do that. Okay, so for people who struggle to fall asleep, tapping on the side of the hand. And please repeat with me. Even though I struggle to fall asleep, I choose to relax now anyhow. Even though I'm dreading to go to bed, because I just don't fall asleep quickly. I allow my body and mind to relax now. Even though I feel so much tension and stress around sleep. It's safe for me to relax now. Very good. Between the eyebrows. Trying to go to sleep next to the eyes, stresses me out. Under the eyes, going to sleep. Under the nose, feels like hard work. Under the mouth, sometimes I wish I could outsource it. Clavicle, all the struggle around sleeping. On the head, all the struggle around falling asleep. Between the eyebrows, I wish I could release it. Next to the eyes, this tension in my life. Under the eyes, so many things to work out. Under the nose, and feeling tired. Under the mouth, I am tired. Clavicle of feeling tired. On the head, but perhaps I place too much pressure on myself. Between the eyebrows, to get it right. Next to the eyes, I so much want to get it right. Under the eyes, I honor all my efforts. Under the nose, I honor who I am. Under the mouth, releasing all this tension. Clavicle, releasing all this pressure and breathe, remember to breathe. On the head, from my body, 
between the eyebrows from my mind <clears throat> next to the eyes from my life under the eyes from my sleep under the nose I deserve to rest fully under the mouth I am enough clavicle I've done enough on the head I have achieved enough between the eyebrows I choose to be proud of myself next to the eyes and give myself a break under the eyes I choose to surrender under the nose to life under the mouth I can't control life releasing any remaining tension on the head releasing any remaining frustration I release the need to control all outcomes I choose to surrender to life under the eyes I choose to trust myself under the nose letting go of any remaining fear-based thoughts under the mouth time to relax now. Clavicle, I deserve joy. On the head, I am at peace. Between the eyebrows, I can let go. Next to the eyes, I can sleep deeply and safely. Under the eyes, I choose to feel safe at all times. Under the nose, I can let go. Under the mouth, in the here and now, Clavicle, I am at peace. On the head, inviting deep and restful sleep. And same thing, please receive a deep breath in and breathe out. Okay. How are people feeling? What's going on for you? <clears throat> So someone's writing positive shift, excellent, wonderful, have a look if you can. I feel really relaxed now. I'll do that every night. Yeah, do that. Seriously, it really helps. It really works. <laughs> you can really, really attest that. Um, will you offer more sessions? I don't know. I um I can fall asleep now. Yeah, okay, so that's that's a good sign, right? <laughs> I feel much more relaxed now, much more relaxed, super excellent, it works. I'm so happy. Fantastic. How long has it, does it have to last? You just tap until you feel more relaxed, you know? I mean, it's called emotional freedom technique in the sense that it frees you of heavy emotions, but also what I love about it so much is that it's free, right? You can just play around with it and uh, use it in whichever way works for you. Can you do it without saying all these phrases? Yes, even that works. So just by tapping without any phrases, it will already have a calming effect. 
in a way that's shiatsu, right? Because you're, stim you're stimulating acupressure points then. Yeah, so it does work, absolutely. Yeah, maybe whispering it or saying it mentally. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, also at night time, you know, you want to wind down. So um, you, you, I also have, you can, if you put my name into YouTube, I have a couple of videos on that as well, right? So you will always have, you have my videos also on my website. You can always find them. Um, and um, yeah, let's just do the third round. Let's not leave out those who wake in the middle of the night um, because that's also, that's so stressful, right? Because you wake up, you're still tired. And you know, you have a long day ahead and you just wonder how on earth you're gonna manage this day, right? I mean, that's generally what happens um, with people who fall into this category. I'm just gonna have a look at the chat. Is this, can you use it for different disorders? Absolutely, you can use it for everything. You can use it for headache, for backache, for sadness, for anger, for fear. Uh, for things in the past that you want to process, um, you can use it really multidimensionally. All right, so let's just go to the last round. And this is for people who wake at night and then just can't back to sleep. Okay, so same thing. Please copy me, tapping on this. And so, so if you belong to this group, just tune into yourself and feel how you're feeling, the anxiety, the edge, whatever it might um, call up within yourself. So same thing, tapping on the side of the hand. Even though I wake <clears throat> in the middle of the night and just lie there, wondering about my life, I choose to relax now. Even though it's so exhausting to keep on waking in the middle of the night, it's safe for me to relax now. Even though I've struggled with this for a long while now, there's no reason I cannot change it. And last sentence, even though there might be some sadness inside of me, I honor who I am and what I feel. Okay, tapping between the eyebrows. Waking at night. Next to the eyes, night after night. And the eyes, it makes me so tired. And the nose, there's been so much going on. And the mouth, in my life, clavicle, and on this entire planet. On the head, how can one not be stressed out? Between the eyebrows, on planet Earth. Next to the eyes, in this present time and age. Under the eyes. But I choose to feel safe now. Under the nose, my breath is deepening and slowing down. And really try to breathe and slow down your breathing. Under the mouth, my heartbeat is slowing down. And by the way, this is also this this aspect you can also use while you lie there at three or five in the morning. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm intentionally speaking more slowly so that you can be in that energy. OK, clavicle, I release. All fear and tension. On the head, I will be OK tomorrow. between the eyebrows, just another day. 
next to the ice. I've already dealt with so much in my life. Under the ice, I allow myself to feel safe. Under the nose, feeling into my inner world. Under the mouth, perhaps there's something I want to release. Capital, I allow myself to feel that. On the head, Letting go of all these emotions. Between the eyebrows, I surrender to the process of life. I choose to forgive life under the eyes for things that couldn't work out. Under the nose. I choose to forgive myself under the mouth for things I couldn't work out. Capital releasing any sadness I might be carrying. On the head, it's safe for me to follow my heart. Between the eyebrows, I am safe. Next to the eyes, I can sleep. Under the eyes, it's okay for me to go back to sleep. Under the nose, I am open to going back to sleep. Under the mouth, deep sleep all night. Capital, I am safe. On the head, I will sleep deeply. And please receive a deep breath in and breathe out. Okay. All right, everyone. Mm. Okay, the video is saying it was too fast. I will not remember the full text to repeat when I'll do this exercise during the night. Thanks for telling me where to find it. You'll get the video, did you? You can just use the video. So um, there are, if I mean, if you want, there are already videos, right? Just go to my website and you can already find the website. Uh, you can already find the videos. Uh, my website is irinanolte.com, right? And you can find all the info there. And... Uh, I also give classes. If people want to join my classes, I give online classes and in-person classes on EFT. So you're always welcome to join these. Any questions or any feedback? How do people feel? How do people feel? How's that been? Your voice is very relaxing. Thank you. Uh, so, so the important thing is the order. Uh, Flavia, that's a good question. So <clears throat> the way it works is with EFT is we first go to the negative. We first go to the problem. I feel tired, I feel exhausted, I feel disappointed, I feel angry, I feel frustrated, whatever it is. And then we add the positive round afterwards. The order, you might mean the order of the points. Yes, that's important in the sense that um, it's a structure you can hold on to. And as you see, it's extremely simple. Um, by the way, EFT is 100% safe, right? You cannot do any harm with EFT. I mean, absolute worst case scenario, you don't really feel very much. That's really the worst that, uh, that can happen. Flavia, yes, the order of points. Yeah, this is the order of points. But again, if you forget a point, um, nothing bad happens at all. Okay, I will also try it at home. Is that we find the text somewhere on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so these... Um, you will get this video, but already have a look on YouTube or on my website. You already the videos are, are already there actually. So you can find them. You can just tap along. Voila voila. So that's that's it from my side. I wish everyone a beautiful, wonderful weekend. Um, if you have positive sleeping experience <laughs> after this workshop, you can email them to me or to Maria. I'm always happy to hear about it. Um, 
I, I tend to get very funny emails um, after these sessions.